Lev Vygotsky's Zone of Proximal Development Vygotsky defines the zone of proximal development as the distance between the actual development level as determined by independent problem solving and the level of the potential development as determined through problem solving under adult guidance or in collaboration with more capable peer. This concept was part of Vygotsky's analysis on child development and attempts to point to a distinct moment in a child's development process where new learning may occur. So for example, if we ask Annie, can you identify a dog, cat, or bird? She can on her own. If we ask her to identify a koala bear or a zebra, she is unable to. But with the assistance of her teacher, she is able to start to identify these animals. If we ask Annie to identify animals that became extinct during the Ice Age, this would be beyond her scope of capable knowledge. The animals that Annie can identify on her own is the zone of actual development. At this level, Annie has already developed her understanding and knowledge of these animals. The zone of proximal development is the area just out of reach of Annie's current knowledge level, but with the guidance of her teacher, she can begin to identify the animals until the teacher's guidance is no longer needed. Identifying Ice Age animals that are extinct are beyond the reach of Annie's level of development, where learning is not yet possible. Trying to learn in this level can be discouraging and frustrating to the child. So how do you assess the level of development? Vygotsky uses the metaphor of a fruit farmer who is ass assessing his harvest. The farmer would consider a full harvest as the matured fruit and also the fruit that is still maturing. Similarly, Vygotsky states that in order to assess the development level, you must consider the development that has already been matured or actualized, as well as development that is still in the maturing stage. Another key criteria of assessing development levels is to understand the qualities the child has as well as the child's relationship to his or her environment. It is important to know the child's actual knowledge background before performing learning activities. Is the child shy, timid? Is there a language or cultural difference? Is there a learning disability? So how does the child actualize their potential learning? Let's take a closer look at the key components in the zone of proximal development. There's the learner. This is the person who is engaged in the task of developing new learning. There's the social environment. This is the environment that the learner interacts with. This could be a teacher or a parent or a social group. This is a crucial part of Vygotsky's theory that all development is generated from the interaction of the learner's environment. Vygotsky posits that the learning activity within the zone of proximal development necessitates the following. First, that the learner is actively participating in the problem. Secondly, the learner is collaborating with the teacher or the more knowledgeable other as the teacher guides the learner to solve the problem. Third, the zone of proximal development is dynamic and shifts as the learner begins to actualize the learning and no longer requires the teacher's guidance. Thus, their potential for learning has expanded. Vygotsky's work on the zone of proximal development was never completed due to his untimely death. However, the concepts has been expanded to other forms of implementations, such as scaffolding, reciprocal teaching, and cognitive apprenticeship. Here's a video giving an example of a learner faced with a problem engaging in the zone of proximal of development, interacting with a more knowledgeable person. Thanks for watching. Created using Powtoon.